joining us now to catch uh, the flow of the program <laughs> and to set everything on fire. It's Kachi <laughs> Ophia with yeah. stories trending around the world. Hello, Kachi. Good morning, Dr. Avati. Uh, good Hello, to have you back in the studio. Thank you. Good Hello, morning, Good to have Hi, you as morning, well. Good morning, Kachi. How are you? All right, Very let's well. begin. We're going to begin with trending incidents of child abuse, molestation, and the general welfare of the Nigerian child. Now, child abuse is not just physical violence directed at a child. It is any form of maltreatment by an adult which is violent or threatening for the child. That includes neglect. Now, you ask yourself, what reason is sufficient to abandon or kill one's child? An incident in Ogun State where the police command arrested a 45-year-old woman Kafayat Lawal, for allegedly stabbing her 17-year-old daughter, Ayomide Adekoya, with a broken bottle to death, has made the rounds. Now, according to the spokesperson of the Ogun State Police Command, Abimbola Oyeyemi, Kafayat Lawal, the suspect, she locked her two daughters in a room where she beat and injured them. Now, while she was being interrogated by the police, she said her two daughters left home during Salah and didn't return till the following day. The suspect, after much plea from neighbors, pardoned them, but then she got infuriated again after her daughters went out the following day and then passed the night outside. She injured the 19-year-old Blessing Adekoya in the wrist while her younger sister, Ayomide, was stabbed in the chest and unfortunately died while receiving treatment. Well, that's not all. In another development now, residents of a community in Edo State recently found an abandoned baby in muddy water. A viral video shows the moment community members rescued the child who was crying when he or she was found. The baby was in diapers when the community members made this discovery. I see big gris, so this became big gris, so. With pampas, everything. Come on, go. Well, there's more. In Surulere, Lagos State, a little boy identified by Daniel was rescued from his foster mom named Onyebuchi, who subjected him to horrific physical abuse only one month after he was brought in to stay with the woman. Now, the boy is from Jos. He revealed that his mother is late and his father is in the village. He further stated that he was brought from the north to Lagos and placed in the care of his foster mom so that he can work for her and get sent to school in return. While concerned neighbors got involved after they saw the lad eating from a maggot-infested dustbin in the compound. Well, to cap this up, a child below the age of 18 does not have the capacity to contract. Neither can that child obtain a valid license. So when a video of a 13-year-old boy driving a truck made the rounds, it began raising questions on social media. Let's take a look at that before we discuss the stories. I saw a small boy driving vehicle. Hey, hey, wait, 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 wait. Can you imagine? It's a small boy. How old are you? 13. Ha! Ah. Now, wow. A 13 year old boy, six small, small children driving vehicle. Eh? Uh, Save Johnny. I mean, this, this, these stories, you know, are very appalling. They're just, these are children that we're talking about, and they're going through so much in the hands of people that are supposed to guide and protect them. It says a lot about our society. Um, everything is wrong about all the videos you've shown. And the culprits here are the adults and the victims are the children. And when they say Nigerian children are an endangered species, this is what it means. From the baby found in the waters to the child abused as a domestic staff, which is human trafficking, by the way. A lot of people don't know that human trafficking is not only exceeding the borders of the country, even domestically within the country. This is human trafficking. And they are all crimes. Uh, you know, and the law provides adequately for them. So it's now the, the, the function of you know, reinterpreting and implementing our laws to ensure that you know, we don't keep seeing things like this happen. Yeah. Um, the world is cruel. I mean, how does a mother kill her own children, stab them to death. Because it's past it's the just, night out. It's barbaric. There's mm -hmm. no other word for it. That's mm -hmm. barbaric. They should be made to pay the, 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 face the law. The last video, the, the child driving, that, for me, you know, even the adults who did the recording should have stopped it. He did not stop it. He allowed it to go ahead. He said, go on, well done. He, it's, it's criminal. Underage age driving in Nigeria is criminal. Although it is a category one offense, uh, unfortunately, it carries just a, a fine of statutory fine of 2,000 naira and impounding this vehicle. 
Um, but what did we see? The adult said, you know, go ahead. Nobody's stopping it. Everybody just turns the other, the other way. Let everything go ahead. Mm. Okay, in 2003, Nigeria came up with a law that is called the Child Rights Act, yes. part four of which is on all fours with uh, chapter four of the Constitution. And the whole idea of this document, running into over 200 pages, is that, you know, even a child is entitled to dignity. Under the Child Rights Act, a, a child in Nigeria is described as anybody under age 18. Mm -hmm. Although it, it's in conflict with the Young Persons Law of Nigeria, which defines a child as anybody under the age of 14, and persons between 14 and 17 as young persons. But the whole issue is the principle that a child must not be molested or maltreated, and that a child should be treated as a human being. In the various cases that you have cited, let's take the first one, which is that of uh, a boy named uh, Daniel uh, in Surulere here. First, you know, as a result of poverty, his mother died, his father is in the village, he's sent to Lagos to come and work with uh, one madame who allegedly maltreats him, and neighbors stepped in, human rights activists stepped in. Now, in the first place, that boy should be in school. We've been told that he's not... He's not allowed to go to school. And this is why I asked the question, what does the law say? Now, under the UBEC Act, the Universal Basic Education Act, you know, every child is entitled to compulsory free primary education. You know, if you don't send your child to school, under Section 2, Subsection 4 of that act, it's, a, it's an offense. But the problem with many of our laws is that these laws are so weak. You know, the fine for the first offender it's just about uh, 2,000 naira. If you repeat the offense, it is uh, 5,000 naira. And that's why no parent or guardian has ever been you know, tried in this country, even when they don't send their children to school. The second thing is that the boy is engaged as uh, a houseboy mm. and is on that account maltreated. Now, there are laws in this country against child labor and against slavery. Because it's slavery, simplicity. And the relevant law in that regard is the trafficking in persons Prohibition Act of uh, 2003 as amended 2015. So the relevant law is 2015. Even that prescribes the penalties, but the penalties are very weak. So this is a problem. The second one of a child that was found in Benin, abandoned, you know, that again is child abuse, is cruelty, uh, not just to a child, but also to a human being. Uh, the third story has to do with uh, the boys driving. Mm. Yes, as was pointed out, the age at which you can get a driver's license in Nigeria is 18. Because the law recognizes that, look, a vehicle, it is not even a vehicle, it is not a car. I'm not sure it's I a can even drive this. This, this is sure a dangerous this. weapon yeah. being uh, driven by a young boy of 13. For you to have a driver's license, I'm not sure he has, you know, you have to go through a driving school. Accredited by FRSC. Mm -hmm. And this is why we know she's a yes. commercial. You know, so did you go to any driving school? First, he's underage, he's not qualified. Then, of course, you take driving tests administered by uh, the vehicle inspection office, the VIO. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So even as an adult, you have to go through a rigorous process before you are allowed to drive. The only thing is you don't need to own a vehicle, mm -hmm. but you must go through this process because the law recognizes that if you drive a dangerous weapon for which you are not uh, trained or competent enough to handle, then you could pose a danger. Uh, to society. People. So those kids, uh, they pose a very serious danger. The other story from uh, Abel Kutai about the woman who killed her children reminds me of Medea by Euripides. Mm. You know, this is clearly a case of a homicide, and appropriately, uh, the police have arrested her. But the question is, will she plead insanity? Mm. Because, mm. you know, the, the, this, is, this will fall into the uh, realm of uh, not just homicide, but also psychological drama. Yes. You know, and insanity will probably be a defense. But whether it is insanity or his drunkenness, mm -hmm. maybe she was in a bipolar state, you know, mm -hmm. it looks like a real tragedy, which reminds me of uh, Euripides, the media. Mm -hmm. Fai? I, uh, in all of this, cumulatively, it just shows that Nigeria does not respect children. Nigeria does not plan for its children. Nigeria does not care for its children. In all of this, I'm not surprised. And there are more that will happen, Kachi. I'm not a prophet of doom, but if you like, you can call me Cassandra. But more will happen. Why? Because when they live in a country where out-of-school children are pegged over 12 million, 
We have the highest rate of out-of-school children in the world. In fact, if you see five out-of-school children, one out of them will be a Nigerian. One in five. We are the out-of-school children capital of the world. Nigeria has one of the lowest immunization for children. Just 13% of our children are immunized from different diseases. Infant mortality rate is very high. Per 1,000 life births, the number is high. So what it means is that even in the healthcare sector, we've not been able to provide proper health plans for children to be able to save our child. So Nigeria is a difficult country for a child to live in. Because if you were born as a child in Nigeria, it is difficult for you to grow old because the governments and the nation at large cannot meet up with your vaccination targets, cannot meet up with you know, taking care of diseases that can affect you from growing, cannot meet up with taking care of everything that should aid you as a child to grow. Child abuse rate is on the increase in this country. Nigeria is fast becoming another hub for child labor. And you see, these are the only ones you are seeing. Maybe most elites in Nigeria do it, those that school abroad. They take 10-year-olds in their house to come and be a, a what is it called, a caretaker to their own 10-year-old in the house. They do it now. It's become a culture. They call them house boy. They call them house help. They rub their head. They say, okay, I give you big meat. But the child is doing manual labor for you in your house. He's cleaning your old children's nappy. He's washing your, your, your children's homes. And we are lying to ourselves. You see, what, what baffles me the most in this society is the grand level of hypocrisy. The palatial hypocrisy in this society. We, as a society, are part of the problem of children in this country. We say we are helping that boy from the village. We subject him to labor here, child labor. Some children have become uh, house elves from the age of 12, 13, and they do manual work. And you'll be surprised that some of these people that, that are even uh, supporting this uh, or using these children are people that are schooled abroad, that will never do that to their own children. So it has just come to show, again, this level of hypocrisy. But I keep saying it. We have a choice as a nation. <laughs> to change all of this or to continue in this hypocrisy because it favors us. And that's why you see that a child will carry a car and be driving. Did the, car, did the, car, the child just drive the car on his own? Somebody sent him on that mission. Now, he was carrying something at the back of the car. It was a truck. So somebody sent him. And he was there with other children in the car. So somebody sent them on that mission now. And the man that videoed him just look and say, how can I score cheap points for social media? Let me post the video. Because he could have stopped it. If he really hurt him so much, he could have gone to the car with him, I want to go and see your parents. Or handed them over to the police. But if you hand them over to the police, what will the police do? So it's a society that is anti-children. And we can come here and talk from today till tomorrow. We will be deceiving ourselves. That's why we need to take prompt steps. Other societies that respect children, societies like the UK, they have a child plan that says we will see to the welfare of every child in this country. A child born in Nigeria has just 5% chance of going to university. A child born in an OECD country has an 80% chance of going to the university. How much have parents got in welfare packages for their children? You give birth to a child in the UK, you are, you are attached to welfare. I think, I, I think it's 200 pounds or 500 pounds every month that they will give to the child. But how, how many times as a social officer, I won't come to your own house and knock on your door and say, I just want to know the state of health of the child. Well, you know, I just want yeah. to know how they are well, doing. I think, eh? I if, think, if a child is in distress, who will the child call in this country? We well, don't have all of that. So well, I think, we deceive ourselves too much. No, I think we have to uh, go back to the province of law. Yes. The enforcement of the law. Incidentally, in all the cases you have cited, those states where these incidents occur are signatories to the... Uh, there are states where the Child Rights Act, which is a federal law, has been domesticated. But mm -hmm. the tragedy we face here is that, look, as progressive as this Child Rights Act is, mm -hmm. only 24 states out exactly. of 36 states in Nigeria have domesticated that law. So how can they take Because it there are persons who will say, no, uh, uh, in line with their own religious belief, mm. uh, a child cannot be a... Uh, classified as anybody okay, under the 18. age of 18, okay. so that they will have the opportunity to marry girls of 11 years and, yeah. and 12 years. Yes. So this is part of the uh, serious problem we have yes. here. But in those states, you know, it's for the government to ensure that the relevant portions of the Child Rights Act 
you know, are enforced. It's in place in Lagos, for example. But as yes. I said, Section 2, Subsection 4, just grants you penalty of 2,000 Naira if you are a first so offender, 5,000 so Naira if you are a second offender. And, you know, of course, people will not send their children to school mm -hmm. because there is no incentive. They, that punishment uh, in the UBEC Act is not, uh, nobody has ever enforced it. Another example of death law. Mm, exactly. Well, these are issues, definitely. The Child Rights Act is a conversation that has been had for a while, and it's the same thing we keep on saying, but that's all on this segment of The Morning Show. Thanks for having me. Thank, Thank you, you very much, Kachi. indeed. Thank you, Kachi. We'll see you again tomorrow. I hope mm -hmm. you are still in Lagos. <laughs> <laughs>